this goal of nine, I've been chasing it for, you know, some time. It was in my mind. And now that it's here, everything is exactly the same. Nothing is different. And I don't think that's American, so that's kind of weird, but still. What is the biggest problem among students in Uzbekistan who are learning English who are getting prepared for IELTS? Which is partly why they don't really appreciate it, because it's free. People who take CD on average get higher scores. Is that true? I would be writing essays at home and then uh, consult ChatGPT. Right now you're talking about ChatGPT helping you as a teacher. What about the students? I feel like ChatGPT can completely flip everything on its head. I think uh, everything comes from self-analysis. But in math, it's, if the answer is five and you wrote five, no one can question that. If you have a nine, that means you are the perfect speaker. You, everything is amazing. I don't think that needs to be true. Because eight in writing is not really impressive. Would you say we're living in the golden era of IELTS right now? Okay. Have we entered the golden era? Assalamu alaikum hamma ge. Şu Edu podcast'in yangi sonunda ko'rib turganingiz bilan xursandmiz. Bugungi sonda biz shu O'zbekistonda yangi nayinlar bilan olishni niyat qildik va bugungi sonda Dovutxon Abdullayev IELTS o'quv markazi ishchilari, Alexander Finkelstein IELTS native IELTS Telegram kanali asoschisi va Dilmurod Nazarmatov Everest o'quv markazidan. Shu. Bismillah boshlaymiz. Hi guys. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thank you too. And congratulations with your band scores. Thank you. Thank you for coming and congratulations with your band scores. So, first of all, I uh, would like to start by asking about your background. How did you come to IELTS? How did you get nine? What has changed since you have got your band scores, like not nine band score? So, who's going to be the first one? Who's going to start? Let's go clockwise. Let's go clockwise. Clockwise. Let's start there. Yep. All right. Yeah. Dovud Khan. All right. Yeah, no problem. So, assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Dovud Khan. I am from Namangan. And, um, well, I started learning English in 2014, uh, technically. I was finishing my eighth grade and at the start of ninth grade, really, when I really took it serious. And um, um, I took my IELTS in 2016. All my prep was in Namangan. I got seven and a half, and afterwards I moved to teaching straight away. Mm -hmm. uh, I became an apprentice of my teacher, of Ipon teacher. And um, yeah, and, and then I went on. Uh, I've been teaching for, well, with some gaps in between for seven years. Uh, but yeah, that's that's been what it is. Uh, so my first I was seven and a half. I took the next one in uh, four months, I got eight, and then two months later I got eight and a half. And that was in 2017. That's been quite a while, and uh, yeah, we were blessed to have a, a nine, like, to get a nine a, couple, a, a month ago in November, and that is what it is. Uh, as far as my life changing, I don't think it changed much, but yeah, I did get more popularity and some fame, but honestly, it's, it's just all the same. My friends uh, or my family, they view me the same. Of course, we are happy, but it's the same. All right, all right. Alex? Nice. Uh, so, my name is Alex. Um, I was born in Uzbekistan, in, in Tashkent, but I, I grew up abroad in, in a lot of different places, uh, mainly in the US, and so that's that's actually where I came from about five years ago. I've been living in Tashkent for about five years now. I think it might be six. I'm not good at mathematics. I think in starting from the next year, it's going to be six. And uh, the first time I took IELTS was 2019. It was like one year in. I came here to teach. I was teaching like general English and IELTS a little bit, but mainly just you know English and stuff. And uh, 2019, I got 8.5. Next year, I like I didn't take IELTS for a while because originally I took it kind of for fun. Next time I took it, 8.5 again with the same exact score, except like the listening and the the reading they were they were mixed up. It was like different. And uh, from that moment on, I knew that I I needed to to change something because I realized that I wasn't really progressing. Like IELTS is you know it's it's not something that you can learn forever. It's there's a certain set of things you need to learn and then you can get, you know, the best possible score. And so uh, this year I, I put my mind to it. I, I really sat down, worked out all the things that, that were going wrong. And uh, October this year I got nine. Yeah. Same as Dovod Han, nothing changed. 
to me, it seems much more funny to be a teacher now because it's like this goal of nine. I've been chasing it for you know some time. It was in my mind, and now that it's here. Everything is exactly it's the same. same. Nothing no. is Nothing different. Changed. What about, what about some jokes, like to tease you, you know? Now yes, you, now you gotta that is also, then. that's true, exactly, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. so right now I, I work at, I work online. I have a Telegram channel, Alex Native IELTS, and soon I'll be moving to Samarkand and you can find out more about that sometime soon. Yeah. All right, and I had a question. Why did you decide to come to Uzbekistan? Because everyone is willing to go to the United States. Everyone yeah. is chasing that, you know, American dream, Obviously. working there, making money, but you've decided to come back. There's, you know, some politics involved, which I don't really want to talk about. It's just stuff that I see as not cool. A lot of stuff happening in the U.S. I mm. feel like a lot of people that come back to Uzbekistan from the U.S., they might have a different story. You know, it's like the goal of getting there is not the same as the goal of living there. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think a lot of people that you're talking about, I know a lot of those people, a lot of my students, for example, they would probably... Once they live there for a while, they'd realize, oh, Tashkent is more cool. It's more nice. So mm -hmm. that's kind of, yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Dilmarad again? Uh, so everyone knows my name, I think. So Dilmarad. Um, <clears throat> I also took IELTS for the first time in 2016, I believe, after like a year of preparation on and off. Like uh, I wasn't a really keen learner. I would usually get bored after three or four months. And in the first try, I, I got really bored and I had to reschedule my exam. Uh, so. I had to move it like closer. Mm -hmm. uh, so originally it was intended to be in April and then I moved it to March, I think. And then uh, it turned out to be 7.5, which was a great score back then, which still is, I think. And then um, at that time, I had some offers to become an IELTS instructor or at least an English teacher. But back then I was really hesitant, you know, what if my skill is not enough? But at the same time, I was quite good at math. Uh, I had scored really uh, great, I think, uh, in entrance exams to white, and that's what I started doing. I started uh, teaching students math for like four years, and then uh, during quarantine, I took the exam again. Uh, it was kind of, I don't know, like full fun, like Alex said. Uh, I was just preparing, f uh, like tr trying to improve my speaking with my friend, and then he got he invited me, Why don't you do that? and then See, because uh, there was a lot of uncertainty back then and we were teaching online. Uh, it was very difficult to make money, you know, because people were not really will willing to pay money. I don't know how you do that, but uh, yeah. And then uh, the, the score was 8.5 and uh, then I was, okay, so maybe now I can start teaching English a little bit. So still I kept math part, but I uh, had some English classes as well uh, for two years. And then I decided that math was not that interesting for me anymore because uh, things did not really change much. But in IELTS, you really have to push yourself. You know, there are different questions coming up and you have to do a lot of research in order to, I don't know, answer certain questions, especially in writing task two quite well. And then there is speaking part three. So there is a lot to be learned. And I was like, OK, most probably that's better for me as a person. And yeah, that's what I chose. And I took the exam uh, a year later as well. So that's in 2022, I think. I don't know, I, uh, maybe after two years, so 2020 and then 2022. So that's going to be last year. Again, it was the same score, 8.5, with some marginal improvements for speaking. And uh, the fourth time took a while. I had been postponing it for, I don't know, for quite a while. And then I finally took it in, uh, in November, is it? Yeah, no, November, and then, yeah, I got my nine. So, yeah. Nice. Congratulations. All right. That's awesome. I've noticed that uh, Dautron's accent is like something like British, British yeah. accent. So how, how, did you mix, how, did, how did you come it's to re British, British accent? Well, I'll, I've loved it. I've, I've always loved it, to be honest. And I never wa was able to uh, speak American. I hated myself when I spoke American. Uh, when I was just learning English. So did you learn it on purpose? Yeah, so, uh, well, I... Again, when I started English, yeah, I had a dictionary, and that dictionary was Abilingo. Basically, it's a Russian dictionary. It had uh, both Amer ah, yeah. American and British, it. yeah, British pronunciation. And I'd listen to words, to the pronunciation of the same word, both in American and uh, British. And I never liked American, to be honest. And I loved British. And I don't know, it's just a tendency or something. Anyways. Um, can't be explained and since then every single word that I learned I learned it in British accent in British pronunciation and I made it easier over time hmm. and then but, but my accent was still uh, mixed up because my teachers or my friends that I was learning English with they all spoke American so mine was mixed American British and then I decided to put some effort and uh, make it pure British uh, uh, now it's a little bit of it's a mix of two accents uh, in British but it's still British yeah 
All right. That's cool. what it is. It's very unique. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you think about accents with actually in general? Like, uh, I don't know which accent I have, but yeah, th th that's certainly not British, and I don't think that's American. So that's kind of weird, but still. Yeah. What do I think about what? About accent reduction, like putting in some work in order to get rid of this Uzbek sure. accent and this, imitating these native speakers. I, I think that's great. If you like it, I, I think the purpose of language is to deliver, is to communicate at the end of the day. And it doesn't really matter what accent you do it in, but I think it's beautiful when a person has consistency and uh, has a certain accent to it. I don't know if they like it. For me, I, I like it. I, I think that I, I've, I've been really wondering about this because back in the US, Nobody cares at all. Yeah, that, that's like the thing. when you go to academia, for example, universities, everybody has their own accent because in most universities, people are from all over. There's like, there's a very small amount of universities where all the students are like American American. Most people are immigrants because you know the U.S. is full of immigrants. But here, I think, like in my opinion, as a teacher, if you're teaching IELTS, it doesn't matter because you're delivering mainly information and skills and all that kind of stuff. But as a general English teacher, I think. A lot of, especially teachers that are, let's say, at a, at a lower level, like in the regions or things like that, I think they should put in more work into accent stuff because I think a lot of students might be struggling because of that. But I think that your accent is, is perfectly fine. Like everything is understandable. The main point is, especially in IELTS, that the accent should not uh, create issues with understanding. Yeah, there you have pronunciation. So exactly, that, that, that's it. I that's think the that's only, something yeah. separate. That's but honestly, I think the real English is British English. Whoa. No, it's not. <laughs> That's what this guy. We're going to have a war right here. This <laughs> it literally says English. War. It doesn't say American. That's <laughs> Technically, actually, it says but American English. But when it changes, it will also, I think, yeah. Uh, that, that's me. I'm kidding, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How joking? Yeah. All right. Uh, I had a question. So you've been teaching the kids in Uzbekistan. So what is the biggest problem among students in Uzbekistan who are learning English who are getting prepared for IELTS? What do you think? Yeah, maybe. No, no, no. I think when you say biggest, and I try to be accurate. So when you nominate something as biggest, you can't really have anything else. So maybe. I don't know. Rush comes right. to mind. Sure. People usually come to you and say, oh, my so I have a five and then I want an eight in, in this many months. In and two that, weeks. That's just a crazy period. Okay. So you can't really achieve anything. And you, uh, yeah, that, that's a struggle as a teacher because you don't really want to discourage anyone from trying, but at the same time, you want them to be realistic because sometime, like in the future, reality is going to come and hit you in the face, and you're like, okay, so most probably that wasn't enough. How, I don't know, maybe this. How, how much time do you think it's needed to get from five to seven, for example? Uh, I don't know. It, dip, it like, there are lots of changing things, like. Um, why do you go, why did you get that five for example right maybe it was just because you were really nervous or perhaps uh it was because you i don't know uh maybe you were uh, having a fever back the, in, in, on that day or perhaps i don't know really uh, There's maybe you, you did not really know what the text format was so uh, there, there can be some significant team room in a month as well but yeah I, I don't really know for an average student i think that's going to be more than i don't know maybe uh, six eight months that's my ex uh, estimate, but... Yeah. Nice. Uh, to me, I, I want to also chip in a bit on that question. I feel like it depends on the student a lot. I would say eight months is might be a bit too long. I would say like four to five months if you're consistently working and if it's the main thing but you're working on. that's not an average student. So. No, I mean, that's fair. That's true. Uh, I, I feel like one of the biggest things, and this is an issue that I faced personally, The biggest, one of the biggest things is misinformation. There's a lot of facts out there that you read like online and they will lower your IELTS score. You'll get a lower score because you're approaching the test from the perspective of like, you know, secret technique hack that you read on some like Indian website, you know, India IELTS. And a lot of these things is just simple changes that you can make in like two seconds and your score will immediately improve. Like not using, you know, complicated words in your paraphrasing, all, all those kinds of things. There's just small changes you can make. I think that's something a lot of students, as well as, you know, being tired, fever, there's a lot of small things that they need to change. Yeah, I'd like to add one point on that. I think there's lots of factors. There are lots of factors in this question. Yeah, it could be, again, you might have a bad day, might have had a bad day then, or just your general English sucks. To be honest, that, that could be the reason. And mostly people rush, students rush, and um, they don't really focus on uh, general English. At the end of the day, IELTS is a test of your English level, right? So if your English is at band six, you can't get above six, however much practice you do is IELTS. 
I think uh, it's the ceiling is their English, not not IELTS preparation <coughs> in that sense. So True. they don't focus on on their language. They focus on practicing, and uh, at the end of the day, it becomes uh, unproductive. So I think IELTS prep really doesn't need more than three months. Two months probably would be enough for most. Three months, like alone, I think IELTS instructors should focus more on language. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, true. Yeah, awesome, awesome. yeah. All right. I also had questions about your online courses. I mean, uh, is Uzbekistan prepared? Do you want to join? No, I mean, like <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, is Uzbekistan ready for online courses? Definitely. I think Uzbekistan is more than ready. Uh, here's my prediction, and we talked about this with some other people. I think coming three, four years there will be a major shift in the market. And I think more people are going to be joining on, on, online because it's, number one, more affordable. Number two, it's more comfortable. And number three, as people are generally becoming more digital, it's much more easy. It's much more accessible. It's like now nowadays, why is Zoom so popular? Why is everybody using Zoom instead of just going to the bazaar? Well, because it's like click of a button, everything is right there. It's like in your hand. Whereas, you know, going to a bazaar, it's not. So I think it's the same thing with like Have you offline. seen the progress like between the offline cor cl classes and the online classes? Is it, is it the same or? What do you mean by that? I mean like... Uh, Are they growing at the same rate or what? No, I mean like... Uh, if you're teaching, for example, offline classes in online classes, the over uh, average score of these candidates is it same or? I uh, mean efficiency. Yeah, I mean like not the efficiency. I mean the level of English yeah, how it yeah, improves yeah. over time. Actually, I wanted I want to tell you about that. So I recently I talked to somebody not recently but a while ago. I think it was Big Zod Mahmoudov. We talked about why do people who take CD on average get higher scores? Is that mm, true? Yeah, they do. Yes, yes. So the reason is because. Uh, people who take CD are usually more prepared and they're also more prepared to take CD. So I think it's the same thing. Well, th there, there is also one factor that uh, the people who are taking CD are older. Oh, they are older. They are? Oh, really? Yes, yeah, really? they are older, yeah. Wow, that's also interesting. I did not know that. Because oh. these are the people who can work on computers. They can type fast and they are like over... I don't think it's about typing fast because... They're over 20. It can be. Most it, people it, don't even type at all. Even Most if you people. type really slow, like you'll be typing, I don't know, right, right. 30 words per 30 minute, words that's per minute is very minimum. slow. That's minimum. And in 10 minutes, you'll be done with task to at least. Well, 30 words per, per hour is it's still no, a lot. No, per minute. No, like, like, yeah, per minute. And in 10 still. minutes, you'll be done with the what, task. Oh. The majority of people do not type at that speed, though. The majority of people, especially students. So looking like, for keys? Well, Where right. is he's, he's saying like that in 10 minutes, he, you yeah. will finish. So. I mean, theoretically. So to, to get back to what I was saying, uh, to, to get back to what I was saying, um, it's the same thing, I think, with online and offline. People who go to offline centers, they live nearby usually, and I think they are just interested to go somewhere and get information from a teacher easily. Whereas I think that students who are studying online, they're usually much more motivated because they realize that mm. the teacher can't force them. The teacher isn't going to come out of their computer, out of their telegram, and beat them up for not doing the homework. So I, I think that it's the same kind of statistic where people who study online, they are on average probably a higher level because they're more motivated and because they know that they can take that online. Uh, what education. do you think about completion rates? Like, uh, is it some, somewhere like 10%? Ooh. How many usually, students People usually like drop course? out of that course, yeah. Well, actually, or actually. They stop just submitting their assignments. So this, this is another interesting statistic. I feel like we should get some people to just analyze all this stuff because there's a lot of very interesting data. So looking at online, right? What I've noticed is, and we actually have a course together, me and Dalatan. How many students do you get per lesson? Per lesson? Per lesson. How many yeah, students? Yeah, that's terrible. How many? Tell me. I'd say maybe 30. 30, 40. 20 or even 50. Can you guys guess? Out of how? Whoa. Wait, 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 so, 40, so, 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 How many students guess are in the group? Guess how many students guess are in the group? That, yeah. Guess. Take a guess. So not on your channel, but in it's, the a, group. it's a separate group. It's a separate group for the, the group. lessons. Can you guess how many students are in there? If 30 is a terrible number, most probably like 500 people. Double that. Oh my God. It's yeah. like 1,500 and out of those 30 are joining. 30 students. 1,200 people, yeah. Maybe they want to rewatch. Like, exactly. That so that's what I was going to say. I think that a lot of them maybe, because online is more comfortable when you're no, watching. It's not about watching, just pace. doing homework. You know? That's true. But joining the lessons is a big part of that as well. You're right. learning How many of them submit homeworks? Or do you have homeworks in we your class? We do have homework in that right. course. It's a free course. Keep All going. right. It's a free course. Uh, Which is partly why they don't really appreciate it yes. because it's free. Exactly. All they did was... No, I, I don't think money is a, is a big factor. I there. think it, it is though. It if is. you pay it a is. million it is. It is. Uh, per course, you'll, you'll, you'll think, okay. No, so. I have students in offline yeah. courses, yeah. like they pay yeah. a significant amount of money for an average Uzbek and then they don't just show up, but, but yeah, for sure that that's def that definitely can happen. But if you spent your last dime on a course, 
if you've invested all you have on a course, a million, I think then you'll really be motivated to perform that. Like, your students might be well off, and for them, that no, no, is not. Far from that, like, typical Uzbek guys. Huh. Well, it, it depends, but I think still money is an additional source yeah, of motivation. Yeah, yeah it also sure. has an effect, for, for sure. Not, not so much. And uh, coming to online lessons, I think one problem that stops people from learning online is their appearance, because when you are doing something on your phone or on your computer, not many people can assume that you are doing something productive. Are you? I don't know. Uh, th th that's what I see a lot. Uh, parents will be calling me, and then he's using his phone. Is that all right? Right? Yeah. Or I want to take take away his all, all his devices, and I'm like, okay, how are they going to do their homework? Because you have lots of ebooks, and then they just they should be doing some listening tasks at home. So uh, you really need technology, but parents really can't accept that because uh, they associate these devices with I don't know, uh, wasting time, yeah, social media, stuff. gaming, and stuff. Yeah. So do you do online courses? Uh, no, I I've been thinking, but uh, I wonder how efficient that would be. You teach your offline students online. That's what you do, right? No, everything's offline. I I I've been sharing certain things on my channel, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I think it's high time to get into I'm thinking about some yeah, doing something space. related to writing with some feedback. So for sure, is with your eight and a half, people definitely be into it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, efficiency and then this, yeah. It's high time. Right, and about you guys, how do you prepare for IELTS? How did you learn getting in? Like, I'm mean, like... How did you learn English? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying about the English. I'm, I'm saying like, uh, do you take classes yourself as well? Because I've heard that some of the uh, 8.5 holders are attending some online classes to get that nine. Yeah. So I've heard about it. And can you share about this? Well, what, what, what is the best place to learn? The light I know. I think uh, everything comes from self-analysis. Yeah, At the end of absolutely. the day, you have to. Everyone has different weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, I, for example, hate writing. I mean, I oh, love really? it when I oh. start writing, but I can't get myself to write. <laughs> That's what, when I start writing, I'll write it. I love it, but before that, I can't do it. And the the only writing essays, the essays that I've written, they are in the test itself. Like in the last two years, all the essays I wrote are in the test. You gotta which keep is your stupid. mind fresh. Which is which is what dumb. are you in classes like? You teach? I, I teach. I take samples from others. I can write an introduction for them, uh, maybe a body, but that rarely happens. I take ready model answers ah. by people I trust, like by Big Zetake. And by the way, we teach at IELTS Zone, right? So you guys can join us there. Big Zetake and um, Muhammad Ali's essays. Shout out to him. I've never met the guy, but he's great. And uh, yeah, Jura Beck, those guys' essays, I take them and I use those. Nowadays, though, I'm, I'm planning to switch and start writing, take, taking writing seriously because eight in writing is not really impressive. Well, not anymore. It, it used not to anymore. be like two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. That's a flex. That's a flex. Not but anymore. No, no, no really. We would, be, we would be counting how many people got an eight. Okay, so that's because of the guy and then uh, he got an eight. Oh, my yeah. God. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at some so point things, also, things like 7.5 was also like good and as an overall score probably like a long time ago. I, I got to mention, so um, self-analysis yeah. is the most powerful thing. But I also want to say, analyzing how and why and what other people do is also really cool. Yeah. There's like, especially, you mentioned samples. I love using samples. A lot of students don't understand the benefit of learning in, without a lesson. Because what you're learning is you have an essay that you're supposed to write. You should understand how to write it, right? You should you should understand what are the steps to writing it. But also the end result that you're looking at, that's also a significant thing uh, to to analyze and to understand what it will look like in the end. Exactly. Samples are, are definitely a, a great material. Like, uh, yeah. Like, like in chess, there's this principle of teaching chess from the end game. You oh. start with the end game. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And uh, basically, you look at the final few pieces, and then you figure out how to win from that position, and then you go back. And that turns out to be the most efficient way of learning chess. And it's the exact same thing. You, sh you show the end result, the, 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 a good essay, eight plus essay, and that's it. You show that to the students, and then you break it down into parts as to what's happening. No wonder Big yeah. likes chess so much. Yeah, he, he's great. Like, Makes Alex sense. Well. He's the best at IELTS. Huh? Yeah, about you? Uh, lear learning? Yeah, yeah. Like, when I got my 8.5, I don't think I was taking class. Like, we were preparing with my friend. Uh, we spent, like, two months together. But even before that, my listening and writing, uh, listening and reading were, like, 38 plus. Uh, and for speaking, the, moment, the, the first test we had, I was, I think, quite good. And, and then my, my friend, who, who, who was a teacher and is a teacher uh, still, Irkin, uh, said it was quite good and then my score would be an eight or 
in the, in the neighborhood of eight and uh, for writing I used to write a lot so uh, basically I was quite prepared uh, English wise but there were certain things to be fixed uh, in order just to get me in, into shape as far as the test goes right you know uh, I, I was very technical I would usually bring up some statistics which were uh, quite irrelevant especially in speaking okay so do older or younger people do something I was like I don't have the exact statistics so that's how it go and then he's like are you crazy so he'd, he'd correct these things and yeah so that was my 8.5 but for nine I had to work uh, I think quite hard not for uh, like receptive skills but uh, for speaking like I did not really get any any external help other than some uh, maybe mock tests with 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 some friends colleagues uh, but for writing I was pretty much working a lot on my own like I would be writing essays at home and then uh, consult chat GPT uh, yeah oh which well, is that's we, we, we should we should come we back to chat GPT, about yeah. absolutely not even that and I, I also got some feedback again from from colleagues that was helpful but yeah you usually know what your mistakes are okay you're, you're right and say okay so this didn't work out so I have to improve this part and then uh, you, you you turn to chat GPT when a language is, is a problem how do you use chat GPT what is the most efficient way to use chat GPT well uh, yeah, superlatives are difficult. I don't know the most efficient way, but what I did is I would write an essay. I would usually try to fix all the mistakes I had. Like grammar was like was a problem when maybe I have some articles issue, article issues, and then uh, subjects were becoming come becomes a problem in very difficult sentences. Um, but other than that, grammar was good, right? And but lexical resource is something that you can always improve. So, so can ChatGPT mark your essays? It's not reliable. No, I literally sent the same essay back to back. What, and, what, what, uh, what if you gave, upload your, uh, the, you know, this band score description? Criteria. No, no, no. it I've has access that. to that, but no, it, do, it doesn't work. Are you sure it has access to? I mean, first of all, it, has it doesn't. Access to the old version. The old version. That's number one, and number two, it's a language model, right? So analyzing and evaluating something and giving it a number is something really different from like comparing words. Now I think it's really sensitive to prompts. Okay. Uh, the same question point. can be, I don't know, can be interpreted in different ways based on exact word choice. So absolutely. And uh, the point about sending two essays back to back with no prompts at all. Gives okay? you a different score. Yeah. And here you have to realize that it's not about the marking criteria being all the outdated because even if that were true, then the scores would, Should have, be consistent. Been, would have been the same. Yeah. And yeah, there true. was this one band score difference. Okay. Seven and a half and an eight and a half. I was like, okay, so. Most probably, I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't really right. rely on that. Because you know, uh, we have an exam which is called uh, Lingua Skills. It is official uh, Cambridge exams, and they use artificial intelligence to mark, to mark speaking. Yeah, and, I had this suspicion about IELTS. Huh? No, 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 no. Uh, in Wri city, writing, like, no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, like IELTS is not. But I think it will come to this point. Do you at least have database? Okay, this essay got this score. Like. I mean, what do you mean? So uh, essays, for example, at least CD are submitted online. So you yeah. have this essay yeah, yeah, version well, and then yeah, yeah. can we, you we, just match and then we have this database so that you can train a certain AI? Probably, yeah. Whoa. They probably do. Maybe. I mean, back in the UK, probably. The thing is, right, keep in mind, AI does some things very well, some things not well at all. And as we talked about, giving a, an essay a number, consistently the same number, that's not really possible. The thing that you mentioned about, you know, being sensitive to prompts, that's also true, but it also really depends on how you train the AI. Uh, tra ga -go -ga -ga? Train the AI, you mentioned that. Um, another thing, so I think the, the lingua skills uh, that you talked about, they most likely don't just use ChatGPT. They don't send the essay. Yeah, yeah and say, it's not ChatGPT. Of it's, course, it, it's it, something it, there is their system. Their exactly, and so I think that you know, if IELTS does it, you know, if if they do implement some kind of technology like this, there's not even a doubt in my mind that it'll be effective, and it's going to be probably to help the people marking. I don't think that there will be a point where an AI will be able to effectively mark an essay for the next 10 years, like effectively, effectively, because I, I think, so. I mean, I'm not a, like an AI specialist. Maybe it's like five years. C depends on what happens next year. If next year Chad GPT-5 comes out, I'm proven wrong completely. Not even doubt. Um, yeah. You never know. You never know. AI All right. Nuts. How do you use Chad GPT yourself? I, I love Chad GPT. I love it so much. Uh, I'm going to be honest. A lot of teachers, their first thought is, how can I use ChatGPT to reduce the amount of work I have? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. I know a lot of teachers that do this. I'm pointing at them, but they're not the culprits. Uh, it's like, you know, how do I mark students' essays with ChatGPT without 
my involvement? How do I do this and how do I do that? I think that ChatGPT is a is a beautiful, amazing way to add to the student experience. So you can give students extra tasks that you cannot make by yourself. For example, vocab tests. If you're giving them a set of vocab from an essay, you can say, okay, ChatGPT, make a list of, uh, make, make some questions using this vocab. And those questions are gonna be amazing because how else are you gonna learn the vocab? Uh, ChatGPT is great at doing analysis, like in terms of how many words are in this essay that are like C1, C2 words. Um, analyze this essay, these, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily giving it a band score, right? Th this is what I always tell students. Don't look for the band score, look for the mistakes. And as you mentioned, like with grammar, it's great. With lexical resource, it's great. With coherence and cohesion, it is even better. Uh, really I, I don't think you. so. I don't think how so. How come? Because uh, I've, I've seen some essays where you have a flaw, okay? So the uh, reasoning is not very consistent, okay? And if you ask ChatGPT to improve the same essay to band nine, the, s the problem still persists, okay? Well, that's because you're asking it to improve it to band nine. Yeah, that, that's the thing. So most probably with that, with, with that problem, that's at least in my opinion, you would not get nine. But ChatGPT doesn't know what nine is. That's the thing. That's the reason you wouldn't get nine because ChatGPT So you have this scoring, it. okay, yeah, yeah. You have to explain it. to ChatGPT how to do specific things. Like for probably, example, yeah. I, I don't remember who it was. I think it was also on, on Edu Action Podcast. If you ask ChatGPT, no, it was IELTS Gala. One of the speakers said, if you ask ChatGPT, Muhammad Ali, to write the essay as band nine, like a high level essay, it's gonna be band 10. Because it uses some incredible words, really beautiful words that you would see in an academic essay somewhere, you know, in academia, like a scholarly essay, but it is not appropriate for IELTS. All of the words there are like scientific words that you really don't need at all on IELTS. Yeah. Band 10, you should trademark that by the way. <laughs> band 10. Oh, what about you? Do you use ChatGPT? Um, I used it. I use it, but a lot more rudimentary than these guys. Uh, I use it to generate topical cap. Uh, mostly, I tested it checking checking essays. I definitely tried that out, but it gave different scores for the same essay, same experience. I'm like, what, what on earth is this? And then uh, what I used use it for mainly is to generate topical cap for my students. So, for for example, speaking questions in there, you can ask the questions. You can tell it to answer it in a way native would. Yeah, exactly. Native would, yeah, and then, and then you can you change the tone, right? Make it a little bit formal and then less formal. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You can tweak it and a little bit. That helps out. That definitely helps. All out. right. Right now, you're talking about ChatGPT helping you as a teacher. Yeah. What about no. the students? No, I, I, I oh, talked yeah. on the shoes. I mean, I mean, like, can ChatGPT uh, help to learn, to study? Sure, sure. I was talking about sure. studying. So like, yeah. when you write an essay, most probably you're not, you're not, I don't know, a teacher. Mm -hmm. You are a candidate. So yeah. All right. What about it you? It definitely helps. And uh, now you have this, I don't know, uh, layer. I think it's available on, uh, on iOS only. Uh, so you have this layer built in and you can basically talk to chat GPT. Okay. It won't chat listen. GPT voice. Yeah. Yeah. It, it won't like technically listen to you, but there is this layer, which, uh, which writes the transcript of your uh, of, of your answers, and then uh, it, ChatGPT analyzes everything, and then comes back with an answer, and then uh, the answer is uh, sent, sent from text to to voice, and then mm -hmm. so you kind of talk to a person, it's, but it can't still um, at least mark your pronunciation or perhaps. What, what's, what else is there? It's just voice maybe, to text. Yeah. It's just voice to text. Exactly. It's like, it's not actually talking to somebody. It's just transcribing your voice. It can be cool, but it's not a full mock test. Yeah, yeah. Not yet. Yeah, that's not yet. Well, do you think it helps though? Well, I've, I haven't tried that yet, but there was a lot of hype about it. The students themselves, could you, yeah. do you think guys it could benefit? Yeah, students I had been doing that it? manually. I had this website, okay, where I'd be just giving my answers and then it would be writing down the text. And I'll put that in chat GPT and then ask it to analyze. Wow. Right? Assuming that pronunciation is and fluency were great. Yeah. I would give, it, it would give me uh, some feedback uh, in terms of grammar and then some vocab. And I was like, I would repeat the process. So that was the manual way. And then uh, later you had that improved version. Okay. Yeah. So to talk about students, I want to tell you, um, when I did the, the lecture at Gala, I created a Telegram channel with 10 prompts for students. Uh, this is for everybody at home. Gala Lecture at Gala Lecture. You can put the link. It's free. It's like it's. I, I shared it it's at the Gala. Still available, well. right? It's yeah. very valuable. It was, it was the gift that I gave. What did you? Yeah. Say? What did you say? I mean, it's still available, right? It's still available. Yes. Uh, it's it's the link is there. It's a, it's a Telegram channel. Um, and I think that with time there will be much more powerful tools. But why I love ChatGPT right now is any idea I've had, like for example, grading essays in this way, giving students uh, a way to analyze their own essays, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things can be done at this point, 
but it just requires some time to figure it out. As, as we talked about, and this is something some students don't understand. So ChatGPT is very smart and it analyzes what you say in a human way. So you don't have to talk in a very complicated way for ChatGPT to understand you. But for ChatGPT to do specific things, like for example, grading essays, doing an IELTS speaking test, doing this and that, these like very complicated tasks, you have to spend a lot of time to get it to understand you. So you can do a lot of stuff like generating vocab, et cetera, et cetera. But if you want to get more complicated results, you have to put in a complicated question. All right. I love ChatGPT. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's cool. That's cool. My favorite stuff. All right. All right, anything you want to discuss? Yeah, how about our plans? What are you guys planning to do with your careers afterwards? So now you got the nine. Yeah. So coming back to the original question, uh, what are you planning with your career? So uh, I'm planning to teach like in the same manner for about for, for, for the next two or three years. And uh, I'm thinking about doing masters huh. in education, not to become a teacher, but uh, if I'm going to stay here, maybe I'll decide to go off for run for an office in government perhaps oh cool. yeah maybe i'm okay. just i don't know maybe just so it's me just being naive just absolutely yeah so uh, write down so my number <laughs> i'm thinking about this this path right uh, doing even phd and then coming back and claiming for for a serious stuff and then, i i don't know maybe so i'll better. i'll change my mind because Hopefully, i've had some experience in the go in the government sector and uh, it wasn't really pleasant it was just two months. So you want to go back? <laughs> so you want to change I'm, I'm it. thinking about it. Like, you know, you this think it's changed? Of you think it's better now? No, you, you, someone has to change. And oh. the, not, not no. only one person. I don't think I can do uh, much. But with many people the moving in the same direction, I think you can achieve some change. Nice. That's deep. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's something. Most probably, I don't know. The, people change and they are their thoughts so that's one thing uh, on the table and then uh, i'm thinking about moving to online a little bit maybe offering some uh, writing courses for this for the start and then uh, maybe even full ielts course because that's so much more efficient uh time wise and then money wise you know uh it, again the same ideas can be bro brought here to the discussion you don't have to commute you don't have to do that and this yeah, but for the for the next two or three years, uh, I'll be doing my stuff as as it was. Mr. Nice. Alex, that's cool. Yeah, uh, definitely. Like ditto. I totally understand you on the efficiency of online. It's much more comfortable. It's much more productive, and it feels like for the students that really care, it's also better in every way. Uh, so I'll, I'll I'll continue doing online next year. I have a lot of big plans with ChatGPT. I feel like if ChatGPT five doesn't come out, at least four point five will. And I really want to figure out a way to use ChatGPT for good for IELTS. I feel like ChatGPT can completely flip everything on its head because there's so many things that can be done with it. Like, for example, the, the thing with the, you know, speaking to ChatGPT as an examiner. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you next year at least something will come out where if you combine two different AIs or you figure out some technology to do it, you'll be able to have like a full authentic mock test with ChatGPT. I, I don't have any evidence about this, but I have this hinch, the hunch. I have a feeling. Hunch, hunch. hunch. I have a hunch, yeah. Hunch. It's not going to kill uh, teaching. What do you think? I don't think so. I think that most people don't care at all. Like the people that go to offline, they would never even look at any options like this. They wouldn't care. So I, I don't think it will. And even if it does, I think that's good. I think that if you cannot provide the value needed to students, you shouldn't be there. You sh exactly. You're going to get, exactly. It's like this, like, why do people who create art why did they not die out? Well, because they started utilizing that in their own, ChatGPT and AI art in their art. That's how they're doing it. So yeah, that's my plan. More ChatGPT stuff. Uh, I'm going to be living in Samarkand for the next six months mm -hmm. from January to, what's the middle of the year? July? June. June. Yeah. From January to June. And then maybe even after that, who knows? I will be the first Niner in Samarkand living in Samarkand. <laughs> okay. Guys, That's a promotion. keep that in mind. I just, just for your information. Yeah, and I'm excited for that. I'm ex I, I really like Samarkand, honestly. Have you guys been there? Yeah, not yet. Not what? Spent never? two days, barely. That's a great place. Not yeah, as good nice. as Kaiva or Kiva as we were, meant, we were discussing, but yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. What are your plans, David Hon? Tell us. My plans? Uh, I'm going to stay in teaching for a while. As I said, I have an arrangement with uh, IELTS, so I'll be here. Uh, the goal is for the next uh, year, not really, yeah, six months, to really level up my teaching and not just IELTS thing. Yeah, I want to finish IELTS, and for me, finishing IELTS would be getting all nines. <laughs> uh, Whoa. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because to be honest, when I first started IELTS, before I took my first test, my goal was all nines in all four sections. and. Um, uh, Shrizad is happy to hear that. This <laughs> is your, uh, this so you is are the taking the test. Um, when? Uh, when? When's going to be? Next test. 
Okay. Well, Any hints about timing? Yeah, sure, sure. It's um, next year for sure, not this, not this month. Uh, and I definitely need to prepare this time around. I'm going to write yeah. a couple of essays. A couple least. of that. Okay. <laughs> just a couple. Just uh, just yeah. a couple you should of definitely essays. try one skill retake. Wow. Ah, no. Um, that's a second hand nine, to be honest. And I, I and that's, that's gonna rude. upset some people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I, I, I think it is, to be honest. To, being able to perform on the same night. Well, you know, is different. Uh, Previously, I was also thinking about that once you retake nine would be much more easier. It but, is, but so many people have tried. So many it's people from with eight point five and like yeah. they were like zero point five away from nine. Uh, they have tried, they've been but it's trying. Ah. They've been trying from since like day one, and only because of, like, I got nine. Yeah, but but nobody uh, else. But the thing is though, like objectively, it's a lot easier. You have a lot less things to worry about. Sure, you have but more things to focus on. My question and physically, is, you're not as exhausted. But in still, fact, you have the same skill, so I think that's exactly, what matters. Exactly. Yeah. What's the difference? If you are getting yeah. a nine, for example, for writing, most probably you have it in you. But on the test day, you weren't as lucky. Uh, let's say you get eight and a half in reading, yeah. and then everything else is fine. You got nine, nine, and then eight and a half. Yeah. And eight and a half in reading is what's keeping you. Yeah. Um, getting a nine, you got nine before. And you can do it again. But or even if you haven't got a nine in reading before, you can just focus on reading for a week or two or three weeks. Well, and you, then you, retake you, you the can reading for test. fifty days. Fifty days. Sixty, I think. Uh, no, I mean like yeah. Fifty so six two, days. three weeks is fine, right? Mm. Yeah, you have a month or one and a half months to just focus on one thing and really exponentially maybe improve in there. And uh, basically mentally and physically it's definitely a lot easier at least mentally and physically. I'm not, I'm definitely, it's not gonna be a lot easier, but it's easier for sure. I mean, yeah, to be fair, it's like when you have a, let's say, let's let's talk about jewelry. I'm not good at jewelry, but if you have a diamond that is like naturally found in the ground, yeah. it's gonna be much more expensive than a lab grown diamond, even though like theoretically they're exactly the same. It's the same material made in a very similar way, except it's made by people. So it's like, when you have a diamond as a real nine and then you have a fake nine, That's I would saying. understand that perspective. But I think one skill retake is amazing, it is amazing. for students. It's I think perfect. it's great. I it's think perfect. that people, if it's like, if, if you're taking the test and for example, you miss your speaking test because you, you fall asleep or something like that. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't yeah. even get a certificate there is, in that. There is, in the there is one, um, you know, caveat. Uh, what was going to be? Uslovia. Condition? So you will have to be present. Yeah, the, yeah. you, you really? should you should be on the exam. You cannot retake that the absent sense. exams because wow. you're what? absent, absent. I don't know why, but yeah. You don't get a certificate if you don't if no. you miss the speaking no. at all? Wow, that's no. cool. You don't get a zero. You don't get a zero. Everything is nullified. I, I mean think. like uh if you miss the exam. Yeah, speaking exam. Yeah, that's gonna be zero. And that means you will not get certificate. Wow. Your exam is cancelled. Cause one of the Agreements of IELTS, you should attempt all four sections and of the test. And the logic being, like, you have to show something in all, sp in yes, all skills, yes. right? Uh, well, if you, you can't prove you can you speak something, then you're not sure. getting anything. You can come to speaking and say nothing. Uh, but you still get you'll, a you'll get a one? You will get one. You will get yeah. one for just coming. And then retake the test. Yeah. Well, that's gonna be funny. You should try it. The legendary oneer. Who is gonna be the first one? The legendary oneer who got all ones. All ones. All ones. Well, that's much easier. I no, think it's then. difficult. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah. Why? You just well, come and do there's nothing. There's a chance you'll get a two or three in 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 listening or reading. Well, you don't have to answer any questions. Yeah. yeah. That's. You just come and do, do nothing. How about writing? You just start the essay. You just say hello. Or something. What if they give you a two or three? No, for hello you will not get. <laughs> come on. <laughs> What about you, Shazad? What are your plans? Tell us. I'm moving to United States next week. Next week? Yeah. No way, forever? Yeah. I'm like, uh, no, no, no. I'm just going to for for master's degree. Oh, okay. For how long? For two years. Two years, hopefully. Which if, place? If I like it. If I don't like, I'll come That's back. That's fair. Yeah, you <laughs> might. You might. Which which state? Missouri. Nice, Missouri. That's respect. Missouri. St. Louis, the one of the most criminal cities yeah. in the United States. Yeah. Have you heard of it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, good luck. Good <laughs> thank luck. you, thank you. Well, yeah. well, where did you leave? Kentucky. Kentucky. All right, that's yeah. much safe place. Yeah. Like? Relatively, relatively. Relatively. Still kind of poor, but but safer. Relatively. Yeah. Okay. So, what's your major gonna be? In MBA, masters in business administration. Business. Yeah. Okay. Because my bachelor was BA, so I've decided to continue. Is this your last podcast here? Well, yeah. <gasps> maybe, maybe, wow. maybe, maybe when I return, I will do uh, another one together. Yeah. Maybe yeah. reunion podcast. Reunion. That's yeah. great. That's that's an idea. That's crazy. Yeah, not talk about me. Like, let's uh, talk yeah, about. Yeah, that's fair. Well, yeah, congratulations to you though. That's awesome. Thank that's you. awesome that for getting awesome. in, and that's we'll awesome. miss you dearly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
And I also, by the way, uh, my plan is to get a bachelor's finally, because ah. yeah, I don't have a bachelor's. Ah. So the thing is, I'm a, the I I'm, I'm a dropout. I, I have dropped out twice from uni. From which from, university? Uh, I have dropped out from Wyatt uh -huh. and uh, from Aqua. Uh, well, yeah, and then I also studied at another institution. It's not quite a uni. Uh, but yeah, so three unis or three schools I've dropped out from, and uh, what is the reason? Yeah. Like I mean, like <laughs> and some people oh, really? when they drop out only once, but you've dro dropped like what three times? You've dropped out from two times. Let's two just say two times. All right, two times. Um, so definitely not finance for the first one. Uh, so I was at White, and uh, uh, you were a scholarship student. I was a scholarship. Oh my god! Yeah, student. I got the scholarship. You were, you were a scholarship student at Westminster. Yeah, and you drop out. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. I'm like, I, I, I had similar thoughts. Okay, when I was in year three, I was a scholarship student at White. Yeah. I was like, maybe I should stop this. So the thing is, I didn't really consult with my parents, and I just dropped out myself, and then uh. let them know. And that was the maybe. Uh, the Major mistake. Major scandal. Uh, yeah, uh, but it's not a really a mistake. But in the sense, yeah. So basically. I wasn't satisfied. I'm not, I'm not here to bash Wyatt, but Wyatt is great. My friends have graduated from it. It's nice. But for me at that time, with my temperament, it's not quite quite what it is. I expected a lot more. I'd expected a lot more from it and didn't really get it in the first year. So was it rigorous enough? Second semester. All right. Because, yeah, no, I don't want to bash you. In, in, do you have I bachelor, like Alex? I do not. No, uh, I'm actually... Like, do you think it's necessary? Like, well... It depends on your goals. If you want to stay in teaching, I don't think you need it. You can get a CELTA and that's yeah, it. Yeah, just CELTA is enough. Yeah, but for me, I want to grow, keep growing, and okay. move on. I'm not. What do you I want? I think to there's do? a lot more to do in the world than. than okay. This, yeah. I think for a lot of people, like teaching IELTS is kind of like a not a side job, but it's it's a it's a it's a job that's on the side of their road. Mm -hmm. And it's like they're they're going and they have their path, and then they take they take a take a little picnic here in the IELTS sphere or teaching as well. Especially, I think, in Uzbekistan, people who know English well, most of them, I think, didn't learn English with the goal of teaching IELTS, I think. Like, what, what was your guys' goals for learning English? Getting into university? Exactly. exactly. And the thing is, I was going to apply to USA, and then I changed my mind last minute, uh, and, and I decided to stay here. And yeah, that's funny, because all the effort I put in was to study in the US, <laughs> and then I changed my mind, and, I, and then I started actively that's it and yeah and i think that's the majority of people i think there's there's a very small subset of teachers here who actually studied ielts in order to teach ielts and i i think that that's um i think that's it i think that's that's yeah that's the main reason that's what it is but yeah getting tesla and celta it's very important celta celta certainly is is a, like a higher qualification in my opinion i have tesla not 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 yet celta um but, but you're I planning to right i am planning to eventually that's true yeah uh, I, I feel like it's it's very important if you're going to be teaching a lot, and especially if you're teaching offline, it's very important to understand what's going on in the classroom. Yeah, exactly. You gotta be you gotta be the best at whatever you do. At least you gotta be proficient, right? And we can't just uh, rely on our IELTS experience or past exactly. teaching experience. Yeah. You have to keep growing, I think. And uh, yeah, CELTA is the next step. The most immediate step for me is CELTA. Cool. God willing, next month. Cool, sure. cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Are there any discounts? Well, we'll discuss. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> For so, the three yeah, 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 yeah. For the three of us. For free of. Oh, all right. That's great. <laughs> this is the money podcast. Every single topic we've connected <laughs> it to money in some way. It's great. Yeah, Topics yeah, yeah. We, we, exactly. we, can, we can discuss about the promotion. Maybe like. So you should talk with other people. I'm not, I'm not responsible for CELTA, but I can definitely ask them to do something in partnership with you. So yeah, do you we, offer we classes or just an exam or what? No, I, I mean like, what do you mean? For CELTA, like they offer CELTA as well. So first classes and then you have some uh, assignments, and then you. Well, yes. you mean what is CELTA? What is? No, no, I, I know what what CELTA is like. Uh, it's how is it conducted? Yeah, basically, what do you offer here? Like it, CELTA. It's the classes. Yeah, classes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, CELTA is basically they, a course. they don't have uh, exams there. They just have assignments uh, along with these, you know, courses. They probably do have tests though. No, no, no. It's basically a course that that's like yeah, yeah, three months or one month, right? Depends. Intensive. Two, two months or one month. Two months or one month. Yeah. I see. Yeah. One month is quite short. My Tesla was like four or five. But months. that's intensive and takes your whole day apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's and one. That's amazing. Wow, that's great. Yeah, from nine a.m. till four p.m. Yeah, and you have to give up your teaching basically, which is impractical. Yeah, and for it's most of us. very difficult. Very difficult. Even Bezatokia said that it's, yeah, it, it, it was really difficult for that. him. So that's why uh, we recommend taking, you know, the normal 
sell the classes which is why i want to take it to be honest because if it's difficult for him what what is it that makes that uh, that course difficult right because english is definitely not a problem what's the problem right the, the work problems work are assignments work 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 assignments work. problem yeah i want to see those to be honest <laughs> next challenge okay. all right what else do you want to do you want to study at university that's a great question i i've asked myself that a bunch i feel like i kind of should but also i kind of don't really care about it right now there's just a lot of stuff going on and i feel like i might do it down the line in a bit it's not that it's not that high on my priority list um you know since getting nine i've been really deep into writing i feel like a lot of material is available out there like in terms of ielts books and all that kind of stuff but nothing that is specifically tailored to uzbekistan mm. like specifically for uzbek students there's a lot of things that misconceptions popular misconceptions in uzbekistan a lot of especially for english things like pronunciation things like grammar i feel like a lot of students are making the same exact mistakes so i, I kind of want to be working on that like writing things for students in uzbekistan cool Cool, cool. Maybe we can collaborate with That's a great IDP idea. IELTS that election. Great idea. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. YouTube. I want to talk about YouTube. Do you guys watch YouTube videos? Yeah, I do. How much? Uh, an hour at most, I think, a day. Really? Yeah. An hour at most. Uh, yeah, I, I try to moderate. Like, an hour a day? Yeah. On average, probably, right? Yeah, some yeah. days more, some days less, maybe. Yeah, typically, I I I I end the day with a nice chess video. Okay. Like, okay, chess video. Yeah. What's your uh, ranking? Yeah. What's your like? Yeah. It was around yeah, like thirteen hundred okay. for nice. Blitz. That's, That's pretty decent. good. Oh, for Blitz. Blitz. That's yeah. still good. nice though. That's still good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe wow. even for Rapid, but but I don't really play classical chess. That's huh. just too time consuming. But yeah. Huh. Okay. I dabbled in it like a year ago. And I could barely stop myself. Yeah, that's what it is. It I would either play, analyze games, or watch watch something. Okay, related to chess. And I was like, okay, I gotta stop this. And do you watch things. Gotham chess? Gotham chess. Uh, yeah, he's entertaining, but I don't really enjoy him that much. I don't know. He he really overhypes stuff. That's fair. He once had a video about uh, beating this cat. Was it cat or fish? Mitty, Mitty, maybe. Stock. No, no, it was like mitten something. It was similar to cat. Okay, and he had this thumbnail. Uh, I I I beat. Uh, that, that, that basically robot and I was like if you open that every uh, every other move was played by uh, Stockfish and I was like okay so anyway I'm doing that yeah so it's kind Are of misleading YouTube? do you have YouTube channel uh, I, I do you should also subscribe to it it's Alex I'm sorry that's, that's <laughs> <right>. <laughs> I, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really run my YouTube channel I I make videos for it sometimes like for example in um, this year in in the summer I went on a trip and I decided to vlog it. I decided mm. to record everything and then make a video at the end. Where have you been? Uh, I went to Samarkand, Bukhara, and Navoi. Yeah. So I, I went there again this time, uh, like yesterday. Is there and anything to record in Navoi? <laughs> that is, first of all, first of all, rude. Okay. <laughs> Sirajuddin will Sorry. come for you. Sirajuddin <laughs> is going to be at your house. <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, like, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there two times or three times. Yeah. There is very beautiful nature. But whenever I ask the, the people who live in Navoy, like, is there anything I can go and see, like sites for sightseeing? They're saying, oh, you know, like we don't do sightseeing here. What do you think about Tashkent? Nothing. nothing to is do. There so anything? That's that's why I'm asking, like, yeah. about the uh, there's, what, what there's was the vlog about in Navoy. We were there for about like one day, a bit less than one day. So we went to the mountains. Mountains. And in the mountains, there's a place with cave paintings on the walls inside of Whoa. a canyon. And they're like really ancient. They look really beautiful. I have some pictures. Once again, you can see it on my channel. Uh, it's a very beautiful place for nature tourism. I'm not so mm -hmm. sure about like the historical monuments. I didn't see that there's that, that there's that many of them as well as, you know, like modern buildings. Also not that many to see of interest, but the nature there is amazing. Navoy is great. Are for those nature. paintings ancient or? Yeah, cave modern. paintings. No, it's not like cave paintings paintings. like paint. Yeah. It's like, you know, people okay. put stuff into the wall, into okay. the stone. So it's like what, what, really what was the city name? Is it? It's Navoy. Navoy, Navoy. It's Navoy. Navoy. Right. In Navoy, about like, I don't know, maybe 20 kilometers away, something like that. Whoa. To get a Nobody told me about that. You should look it up. It's actually also present in Tashkent, near Bochka. That's like in the... Seriously? Yes. There's also cave paintings. Ancient cave paintings. You, got, you guys so don't know. So carvings, basically stone carvings. Yeah. No, not necessarily carvings. It's like paint. I think they do it with like some other stuff. You can look it up. I'm not sure about the chemical processes. You guys, I know more about <laughs> places Vegas, to see than, than <laughs> you guys do. Shame on us. Shame yeah. on us. Um, yeah. Uh, do you think IELTS will continue to be popular? Yes. That's a, that's a good question to ask because I think there are lots of alternatives in the last few years. Duolingo is one of them. Um, this is going to get Lingua cut from skill. the podcast. The thing is that uh, IELTS is still only offline right now in Uzbekistan. So it, it has its reputation. 
Uzbekistan. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And in the world. Yeah, in the world as well. So that's why, that's why I think it, it still has some time. Unless they start doing this on online IELTS, and then it's gonna be, you know, messed up. Because in other countries, when they start this online IELTS, they do actually oh, IELTS online. Exists. Yeah, what and it's, Can you tell us about that? it's in Ukraine cause, b b because of war. Because oh, yeah, okay. not 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 a lot lot of examiners there, so they decided to launch their IELTS online, and they've been doing there. But I think uh, and they also done it in Turkey. I don't know what, what was the reason behind, but uh, so I know about two countries, Ukraine. So what was the effect? So recently. Um, some clever guys from Uzbekistan, so they figured out that they can do online IELTS by using VPN to show that they're yeah they just using VPN oh, showing that wow. they're there and they just taking the test, but it just shows that it's on IELTS online result. So and oh yeah, it's not completely valid, is it? Yes, it's not val valid, but uh, at the beginning, government of Uzbekistan was accepting it. Uh, until they've seen some, you know, strange pictures of the candidates on the certificate. The, he, the guy was sitting in a kitchen. The, uh, there was, a, you know, uh, all the dog in the appliances uh, yeah. behind. So. Do, does it say it's online IELTS test result? Yes, yes, yes. It says, it says, but you know, government doesn't really read. read. Yeah. yeah. They just see the score and it's like, like okay. But then um, after some time, um, the results were strange. Mm. There was something like, you know. Reading seven, uh, listening seven, writing seven, and then for speaking goes three point five. So, because speaking, you should do yourself. Yeah. That should be, you know, it should be you. But the other parts were done. I think it was first done. introduced during quarantine. Like yeah, indicated, yeah, it was yeah. called. Yes, IELTS yes. Indicator. it was. Yeah. It was uh, IELTS indicator, but then they switched it to IELTS online. Okay. So you know, Uzbekistan is not ready for online tests. It's not about Uzbekistan, I think. There, there is nothing unique because if you have the opportunity to cheat, I think most people would. That's not necessarily true. I, I know for a fact that definitely here there's more of an incentive to do it because the advantage is much greater. Yeah. And generally there's more like control when you're doing it in other countries. Here it's difficult because there's a lot of like technical stuff that isn't present, I think. Like for example, geocaching data, like for example, the location. Like here, a lot of apps don't really use the accurate location, whereas in the US, it feels like apps always know where you are. And I think there's a lot of other technical stuff. And what about punishment? Like, is, is the punishment grave? In, you just don't get in, your in the, certificate, oh, that's I guess. It. I think so. Like if you're, if you're caught cheating, they just don't give the certificate. And then when we figured out, uh, we just said that uh, government should not accept this kind of certificates because they were coming for us. They were asking, like, That's terrible. you know, like, and there is, you know, the IDP IELTS stamp on yeah, it because they took terrible. it with IDP uh, online. So, and we said, like, please stop this because it's ruining the IELTS reputation. Mm -hmm. so, and they d done some uh, changes in the system. So, since then, I haven't seen anyone taking IELTS online from Uzbekistan. So that was a problem. So hopefully IELTS Online will not come to Uzbekistan yeah. soon, maybe soon. All right, I have a question. Why hasn't anyone gotten an A9 an, an for writing? Like, what's question. stopping people? Because we suck at writing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would not call that sucking. Like, when I you mean, get an A9 so. is concerned. I, I think we are probably not deserving, but I th uh, there, there are a couple of guys. guys there are a couple of guys though, close. I think probably the level, but the, the, the level is getting better. We are leveling up. I think overall as IELTS instructors, because eight is a lot more regular. Yeah, and eight point five is also getting more regular now. Sure, sure. Yeah. Right. Zimrod has eight and a half. I have colleagues who have eight and a half. Yeah, around ten people. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. The number yeah. is growing. Yeah. For sure. I think it's being able to perform on the same night. Like if you write a decent task one, but you mess up your task two, to get a nine, you, you have to get a nine in task two. You have to two. get lucky. Yeah. You have to get a perfect task. You have to write a perfect task two. And your task one should be okay. I like, think it's, it's, it's eight, eight, right? The minimum, eight minimum, 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 right? Yeah. Which is hard to pull no, off. No, I, I, don't, I don't think so, because uh, I've seen recently, I mean... Oh yeah, it's eight and a half, actually. Eight, eight, eight point five. Colleague. It should be 8.5 and... But, but seven for task one and eight for task two will, will make uh, an eight overall, I well, think. How many people take IELTS in Uzbekistan a year? Whoa, that's a lot. Fi yeah. Like, like 50,000? Oh, come on, more than that, no? Yeah. It has to be more than that. It has really? to be 100k, 80k, 
80k maybe maybe mm, 50k no. with you guys no, can we just look at this trf for example my number was like 50,000 so i was the 50,000th candidate that's not that uh for the city isles candidates the candidate number starts with with 50,000 and then uh. goes like one two three four five but for the paper-based candidates it goes like from zero 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 is the candidate number consistent so for example if i take the exam today and then I take it a week later is it going to be like actually how many people took yeah. really yeah. that's i didn't know so that. you can that's do the math crazy. you can yes. do the math yes yes, wow. yes 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 cool. so it's 50k with you guys or with bc and you combine no 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 for idp separately and bridge council separately so 50k with you so if that no 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 no, no, no. i'm saying about the overall market 50,000 overall okay with you and bc uh, add it up okay i thought that was more to be honest yeah same 80k at least 100. i feel like there's a lot of people studying so that, that's trials. why that's why ielts is only uh like on the beginning stage in uzbekistan only like uh two percent three percent of people uh who are entering the universities are taking ielts what? only three percent can you imagine because uh every year uh, more than one million people like 1.5 million people not 1.5 but more than a million graduate yeah, from mo schools. Not more than one million and just imagine that the, there is only fifty thousand people who are getting ielts there and there is some repetition reasons. as well like there's, yeah but there's repetition as well so not the numbers takers, most do you have data about the people who are taking tests outside of ielts like do you think it's because no, it's gonna be only five percent so if, if if we count that the, there is only one million people who are yeah it's gonna um, be five percent so it's five percent so i think there are two reasons for that the first reason is test the test is not cheap yeah it's kind 200 of 200 bucks yeah. almost yeah 180 and the second reason is prep is not cheap Either, sure. like IELTS sure. courses ta in Tashkent for sure they are not as affordable as other courses maths courses or Russian courses yeah yeah that's probably the two reasons any any plans on uh, handling that situation uh or? we don't set the prices the prices are set by the IDP and rich consoles they negotiate the price so yeah, they yeah. do something like that yeah okay how about your projections for the next year uh, is it growing the number of students yeah. taking the IELTS? Yes, yes, the numbers are growing like twenty percent every year. Okay, that's cool. Yes. I have a question. So, what is the main thing that you're looking to do? Are you looking to attract more people to take the test that would not have taken any English tests at all, or are you looking to like work on increasing IELTS or increasing the popularity of IELTS, the popularity of IELTS? among other English tests? What's the main thing? Oh, I don't think that other question. English tests are so popular in Uzbekistan. So it's not that, it's the fact that people are just not taking any English tests. Yes. That's fair. Uh, yes. Well, well they're, they're just taking this, you know, the Sefer Uz Uzbek uh, multi-level yeah. multi multi exams. That's quite exams. popular, I think. Yeah, because it's, it's cheap. cheap. Like 400,000? 400,000 400, yeah. sums. So uh, we cannot compete with that. Because you don't have to. That's fair. It's, it's five, five, market, five actually. times cheaper than yeah, IELTS. So that's why. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, do you regard them as who are going to be studying? Yeah, in only in before governmental yeah. universities. So. Do you regard them as competitors? Hmm? Do you regard them as competitors? No, 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 no. It's it's different to totally ranges, different, right? market. different market. Yeah. So, I don't know. M maybe if they increase their prices, <laughs> but then they, they should will increase not, their prices. They, but, but then they will not be able to compete with IELTS. For sure. Plus IELTS is international and yes. this is once again is domestic. That's I think Sefer is accepted in EU for sure. No, no, no. The, the huh? Sefer, the multi-level that we are talking about is uh, only accepted in Uzbekistan. By DTM, only for, yeah. Uh, the really? is Sefer work, okay. But there is also Sefer, which is like official one by Cambridge, I think. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Is it from Cambridge? I, I think so, yeah, It's by sure. EU for sure, European something. Yes. I mean, this, yeah. this, the Sefer marking, like A1. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A1, that, A2, that comes from Sefer. That's like official, but I think the multi level, even though it uses that, it's not necessarily affiliated. Yes, 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 yes. How much is Sefer in Uzbekistan? 400,000. No, no, no. Multi level is 400. The, the Sefer, Sefer. Sefer. Uh, I don't know. Sefer. Not multi level. Have you, have you heard about the, that Sefer? You I tried one? taking that test. I wanted oh, yeah. to take that test. I couldn't just find where to register for that test. For well, God's you sake, see, you that see. was so hard. And what do you think about standardized tests in general? Like, uh, I I, I've it. been listening to a podcast about IQ tests, and then uh, it, it's related closely to a sta a standardized tests like SAT, and then I assigning I a number that. to a person in, a, in, so a in general. Like, I think I watched that video. I most likely, but I, I don't remember who made it. Was it a YouTube video? No, it was. Uh, it was a podcast like called no stupid questions i think i think i've seen that i think i've watched that before or maybe free economics i don't know which one people here don't really know standardized testing in the us 
Uh, it might be different. I haven't been to school for a while. In the U.S., every single year, once you start high school, you get this test, which is like a long test. Regardless of what you're studying, they're tested on the same stuff. It's very similar to the SAT, as far as I know. On SAT, do you have like these circles that you have to fill in? Like you have multi, yes, you multiple do. choice questions? You do, you do. So it's basically the same thing as SAT, but everybody takes it. I think it's it's the most stupid thing ever. It's it's really dumb. Why I so hate standardized that? testing. It's standardized. You can't standardize knowledge. I mean, IELTS is kind of doing the same thing. You're trying to standardize a level for everybody. Mm. But English is a much more specific thing than just... You know, kind of I think he's talking about tests in general, not just no, no, no. standardized even, even tests. Even when the answers are concrete, I, I think it's vice versa. When you're testing someone's math skill, you can, I think, give a more subje objective, objective answer, objective answer than language assessment because when someone reads an essay, you're like, okay, so you can always find a mistake. Right? You, you could make some improvements here and there, but in math, it's, if the answer is five and you wrote five, no one can question that. Right? But the thing is, uh, and, and this, this is the feeling that I've had ever since I tried IELTS for the first time, okay, so I got my 7.5, I was like, I don't feel like I have that level of English. Okay. And now I have that 9, I still make mistakes, I've been making mistakes since this podcast started, and the same is true for everyone as well. Like, I, 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 I listened to the, to the podcast, the first version of this, uh, Niners, okay, and they were making mistakes too. I'm not criticizing anyone, but still, so, uh -huh. uh, like, nine. In my opinion, nine is something where you reach this uh, very fluent level and you shouldn't be really making these actually, silly mistakes, right? I have an idea. I, I think the bar has to be higher. I have an idea on this, actually. So the re I think the reason why IELTS use nine and not 10 is because nine is still not perfect. Using <laughs> 10 would be the level. 10, I think, is the level that you're talking about. And that's unavailable with IELTS. And actually, if you look at the assessment, 9 is still not the highest level you can get. I and, then, well, uh, and then and then I, the I, thing that I'm... I don't even I'm... know the, the reason I why... IELTS 10 is a real thing. <laughs> See, it's already trademarked. You were too late, Shirzad. You should have trademarked it earlier. I, I, I think that you're very right to some extent, but also keep in mind that IELTS is not testing your, let's say, academic ability. It's not testing your public speaking skills. It's testing your English level. And when your English level is expert, you can technically mark that. You can see that somebody is an expert user of English. If I gave you like any text, almost any text, would you be able to at least tell me what it's about? What is the, who wrote it? Like all that kind That's of stuff? That's not an expert, but yeah. I, I was tried uh, Origins of uh, Species, okay, by Charles Darwin. Darwin. That was a very difficult read. But were you able to like work with it at least to some extent? A little bit, but I was struggling. W wasn't that I was in yeah. old English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah kind of. That's 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 like a, that's that's like almost a completely different language. Um, so I think that that's that's a lot of people misconstrue the fact that if you have a nine, that means you are the perfect speaker. You, everything is amazing. I don't think that needs to be. No, true. It, it, it's not about only nine. It's like if someone gets a six, that could be a different like level student than someone with the same score. Yeah, exactly. Because no, that's uh, people sometimes perform poorly during a test because of maybe nervousness. Perhaps because they they can't happens. really they can't really work that fast, right? Because they, maybe they are hardworking even more so than the one uh, with a six, right? Or maybe with a seven. And if you give the same task, okay, with maybe a certain deadline, maybe they would do, uh, the, the guy with a lower score would do a better job because of their maybe persistence. Perhaps they would maybe have better discipline because, because in the exam, you, you can't really be distracted by your phone. But in real life, that's, that's a completely different story. And I, I, I don't really know. English skills and test taking skills are both very important on IELTS and they're both very different. Test taking skills, like being able to answer questions in the correct way, understanding against your better judgment sometimes, the fact that the question is asking something different than what you imagine it is. A lot of time when you're reading a text, especially like true, false, not given, the context would give you the answer in one way, but your skills tell you, no, that's actually incorrect. Because a lot of the times the questions basically try to fool you, right? So I think that it's very important to, to make that distinction. Like teaching IELTS, there's a reason that teaching IELTS exists. It's not just general English, it's because in order to get a good mark on the test, you also have to adapt your English yeah, to yeah. You want to take some English. logic? Exactly. You have to understand it. Exactly. And, and also getting whatever score you got, uh, 7, 8, 9, 15, I think that marks your performance on that day. It doesn't really... It doesn't have but to people, be a consistent But people level. interpret that as, as it is. Yeah, right? and that's... Okay, so yeah. you got a 6, so you don't really use that use language as proficient. Yeah, right? but that's yeah. true. That's biased, but yeah. People should look deeper than that. And do you think it's it can be fixed? I mean, if you retake the test tomorrow, there's no guarantee you'll get the 9 tomorrow. There is a very low chance, Shot, I think. Shots fired, shots fired. There, there is a... For sure. No. No. It's, it's getting a little bit more popular now. In Most Vex. probably because I've, of the I've price seen, again. I've seen the advertisement. How much is it? I don't know. I haven't tried, but they started testing TOEFL in Uzbekistan. The thing is, 
because lots of guys and girls are applying for US and US sort of prioritize TOEFL or IELTS? Really? A little kind of, bit, to yes. some extent. To some extent. I mean, TOEFL, as far as I remember, TOEFL is like, it's an American thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why. I don't think so, though. I think that TOEFL is less popular on average oh, than sure. IELTS. I think, I mean, at least in Uzbekistan, IELTS is much more popular, definitely. And as far as I know, Uzbekistan is actually one of the countries that a lot of, like, places, a lot of universities, they want students from. Because there's a lot of like you know talented people here, uh, green cards for example, and and also university scholarships. A lot of these things go to Uzbekistan specifically. So I, I think that IELTS maybe not necessarily prioritized, but I think it's like about equal probably. Yeah, I mean, still it's, it's an American American test, so they it's a national thing maybe. I don't know. It, it definitely sure. doesn't not have sure. any more weight than uh, yeah. IELTS. But yeah. But back back then in 2002, TOEFL was more uh, popular, popular than, IELTS. than IELTS. What caused the switch? What do you think? Well, I've heard the rumor that the there was agreement that these international universities will accept only IELTS. Oh. And when did was, IELTS start? Kind of, that was kind of. No, no uh, when did IELTS start? By the way, early well, 2086, I think. Really? Wasn't it like the original no, 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 version no, no, was 86? No, no, He's asking about Uzbekistan. No, no, no yeah, in general. In general, like, that was yeah something like 86, something like. Soon there's going to be IELTS historians who will talk about the yeah. history of IELTS. <laughs> I actually read the Wikipedia article on IELTS before I took the test. So. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make sure to get all the facts, just just in case. Everything I can get my hands on. Yeah, and it was totally different from the IELTS that we are taking right now. It was reformatted several times, I think. Yeah. Two or three times. Major Even the photo on the certificate was added recently. Wow. I don't know, maybe two thousand early two thousands. Yes, early two thousands. Yeah. yeah. That time, what the photos were added, but before you mean the logos or no, 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 the photo of Kennedy candidate. Kennedy candidate on Tiara. Ah, really? Ah. <laughs> and the finger scan as well. Finger scan was also implemented in two thousand something. Six or something. Yeah, six, eight. Yeah, you you read that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Would you say we're living in the golden era of IELTS right now? Okay. Have we oh. entered the golden era? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Golden era of IELTS. Yes, I think right now it's like you know, IELTS is kind of. Is it crazy? Yeah. You can. Say everything's that. tied to IELTS right now. Even the go government institutions, when they're taking to job, hiring someone, they ask for IELTS. I was like, why do you need IELTS? Come on, like, uh, there was a situation uh, last year. Yeah. So a person, he's 60 years old, he's doing his uh, PhD or something. <laughs> and he, he's like, he needs to graduate th this year, right? And in order to graduate, he needs to have this international certificate, That's like IELTS or something. <laughs> what score did he need? He didn't score. So that means that he will not get his diploma unless he gets this international certificate. So and he, he was standing there, he was just complaining to me. He was like, oh, you work here? Like, yeah. Do, do you think there is any logic to that? Like requiring people to but have... He didn't score or who couldn't score? But he took the test and... No, couldn't. he did not take the test, I think. No, he took the test, but he couldn't get the, you know, required the required okay. score. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, like 60 is. Yes. His, uh, I mean, the sphere where he works was way far from no, it's not about from English. your field being related to English. I, I don't know, he, he maybe there is something. some explanation. Uh, Maybe that's just, just to make well, sure that you can stay up to date with uh, other research. I feel like I'm going imagining, on. I'm sorry for interrupting, I'm imagining someone who's 60 sitting down in the same environment that I sit down in and taking the test, and I imagine how stressful it is. Yeah. Because for me, if I want to take IELTS, I drink a coffee before the test, and I drink a coffee like after the test, sometimes during the test. It's impossible to like be calm and to do it in a nice way. You have to really be at, in your best shape. Wait, 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 wait. And when you're like 60... How do you drink coffee okay, during the no, test? Not during the test. <laughs> I, 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 like, I, I mean, he said before and after. Before, I also said during. I mean, if, if you hide some coffee in the toilet, ah. you can do it during the toilet <laughs> break. <laughs> but just, don't do that. Do not <laughs> don't do that, do that. Yeah. theoretically. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's like, I, I just... If, it, if you're like 60, I think is IELTS is not created for people who are like 60, right? Also, the pressure, psychological exactly. pressure. Like, Everybody next to you is young, fresh, in their prime. No, I think when you are 60, you don't really care about them a a I don't anymore. Know. Maybe. You'll be quite that, cool. That's also the point. Like, he will be like, you know, I'll just try and do my best. But Maybe that's wh when your profession and your job depends on IELTS, I think you will be stressed anyways. Yeah, yeah. It's but, something but, like but they have this maturity, you know? They can like, okay, so it's not a big deal. I'll have a second chance. I think it depends on the personality. I think it's because he didn't take my courses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you should do marketing. I should. I do. Actually, when, when you're working online, so you said you're going to be moving online. I am right now. And you are as well. I'm going to give both of you guys some advice. If you are imagining yourself as just a teacher, you will fail. Just teachers on Telegram, especially, they get nowhere. You have to be a marketer. You have to be an advertiser. You have to be an entertainer. You have to be a motivator. You have to be everything at the same yeah, time. You're doing a great I job. I think that online is much harder than offline. Not because you have to have like deep skills. It's because you have to have a very wide subset of skills. You have to be able to design things, talk to people, work out meetings, delegate work, like delegate tasks to different people. It can be tough. It can be tough. So to help us out, guys, join our channels. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's a great idea. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you to Show actually our best. for advertising us for free. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he not here? I wanted to meet Akmal Eka. I was so excited. He's in the US. No, no, no. He's here. He just came the day uh, before just yesterday. Like me. Uh, he came for the biggest test in Uzbekistan. Ooh, and how, how it was? was it actually? It was really big. It was more than 2,000. Oh my God. It was wow. close to 2.5 thousand candidates per one day. Like it was the whole Uzbekistan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how many in, venues? In Tashkent only we had six or seven venues. Six venues. Can you imagine that? I have a question. Why? What do you mean why? Because well, you, because of you guys. Why do you start the courses on September and wh why do you, I mean, I mean like, I mean you, you, all the education centers start their courses on September. No, maybe that's because people want to end the year on a good note, you know, with some achievement. And also like some uh, people want to chill out usually and start yeah, the new exactly. year with some new challenges and finish the year with a success. Yeah, yeah and suffering also, to end and then enjoy your vacation. Yeah. Exactly. And also they prepare for these, you know, speaking questions. They know that the speaking questions change. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's why they, <laughs> that is, yeah, they, they start preparing on September. They they read and remember all the questions, the like, answers. How, how realistic are the IELTS speaking assistant app questions? Are they like real? Yeah, are they like real? You, yeah. you tell me. No, I mean, I know that on average they are, but I also know that a lot of the questions well, from the app. Well, it's not official. Yeah. Uh, the, I think it's uh, memorized. Where did those Mem it, it was come from? It, it's like, memorized. I think it's memorized. No, no, where, where do those questions come from? I think from China. From China or <laughs> India. China or Philippines, <laughs> maybe. Philippines yeah, maybe. Somewhere. How do they Probably know that Philippines. questions are going to change on a certain date? Well, this is, you know. They have a schedule, I guess. You, 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 you know it. Like, uh, Every four months they change. Every four months. So it's changing in January because the new questions were in September. So everyone knows, uh, all, all teachers who are taking the test, even like they notice that the questions have changed. Uh, also the topics oh, they say next to them, wh when they're going to be changing, right? Yeah. May to December, yeah, September to August December. Is the, uh, no, no, I mean, those it's people it's who look, make the app, right? January yeah, new test, uh, then May. May? January, May, May new so tests, it changes then it goes in May, like the fifth month, and then uh, the ninth September, and then January. Oh, so it's it's three months between. No, no it should be two before. Every fifth month. Every fi what? No, no, okay, no. Wait. So January, January February, February, March, month, April, and then May. In May you have different Every set of fifth questions. Month. May, January, and then February, May, June, July. No, August, no, you should September. count May as well. Yeah, May, May yeah. Uh, June, July. So there's August. three months between the month where it changes. No, four. No, it's three. Look, okay, look, look. January, January, February, don't, don't February don't March, like April, May. Uh, no, 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 on the first of May, May, you have May different set of questions. New questions. Yeah. May already new questions. So May, May June, June, July, July you have August, questions. and September. Yeah, four, then it changes. Four months, you see? Okay. September new questions. Every one hundred and twenty words. It changes uh, three times in a year. Yeah. January. Yeah. April, yeah. September, April, May, Sep August, September. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I, I thought I thought you all knew, knows this. I I I, I, know this I don't really care to be honest. Yeah. I mean, yeah, or, or even even if they change, they just change a little bit. No. They change how half how the, the topics will be changed? Re no, I mean, like even if they change, for example, do but you like water sports? It will back. be like, do you like not water sports? Is gonna be like something sports. No, you you'll have completely different. Questions. Really? Yes. You you'll get something about hair, for example. The topics tend to stay the same. The topics tend to stay the same. No, I mean, no, over over everything. two years or two three years. There are recycle. some things that are very similar. Like, for example, in part one, usually have questions like past, future, like opinion about this, opinion about that, two options. The types of questions are very similar. The topics change a lot. And especially in part two and three, you have like five or six specific types. Like, for example, describe a person, describe a place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And it changes as like you have 
new questions and old questions, and then the new questions become the old questions. No, and I, the extra yeah, new questions I get that. I get so that. That's, that's cool. I, I'm basically saying like the question when we take the, when we took the test in 17, 19, whatever, whenever we took the, the test. Same, yeah, yeah that's they, what I'm saying. The topics were the same. Like, yeah, they they shift. Yeah, like what's the, they have a cycle. More or less, right? they cycle. That's, that's why. And most importantly, that the courses end in December, so that's why everyone is taking. Also, to be fair, it's the last test, paper-based test date. They are, of, of, right? Uh, this year. In, yeah. Namang, uh, in Namang, in Uzbekistan. So do you guys go I for like, holiday and stuff? I mean, you're not going for holiday, not yet. Yeah, like, do you mean the IDP team? Uh, IDP, BC, I mean IELTS generally. Yeah, IELTS we teams. have like five days off in January. Nice. So, I think we're gonna stop here. Thank you guys for coming. Maybe we will have another podcast with you as well after he gets his yeah w- w- when you get when you get all nines maybe you and all after you come back, back. So. that's <laughs> also important <laughs> well, we have so many people here who, who, who can do the podcast or well, you could do it via zoom with you uh no i don't think it's gonna work out because it's not so good so thank you guys thank you for coming thank you wish you all the best thank Absolutely. you